Welcome everyone back to my channel. Well, if you've seen it on my short here, the Blackstone Griddle is my favorite purchase this year. So, for all you New Philanders and all the Nova Scotians that I've told about fish and brews, today we're making some fish and brews. Let's do it. Well, I'm going to get started by listing and showing you guys what I use for the ingredients. First of all, you're going to need a very important ingredient is your hard bread made by Purity. Second of all, we need some salt fish. You can find this almost in any grocery store. Onions and we need pork fat. This, I'll show you how to prepare it in just a moment. You need pork fat and last of all, potatoes. I'd really like to apologize. It's been a crazy busy summer with the homestead underway. And uh, thanks to my mom, she got me this puffin cup while in Newfoundland. Newfoundland souvenir, the old puffin. So first of all, I'm going to cut up about four onions. The potatoes, as you can see behind me there, I've already boiled them. And I use, and I use personally about seven or eight medium sized potatoes. And for the purity hard bread here, there's nine in a package. I put six because I absolutely love the brews. So for your brews, what you need to do is soak it overnight, cover it in water, and in the morning, just like I've done right here, this is how it looks after, but before is just basically just a little cake and hard bread. Delicious. This is one of my favorite parts of this meal is the hard bread. So after our fish is fully boiled for 20 minutes, we're going to strain it. And now onto our pork fat. This is about the size of a piece of pork fat that I use every time. And folks, to be honest, the only unhealthy, if you want to call it that, part of this meal is a pork fat right here. And it's not that much and super, super flavorful. So after cutting it all very small, we're going to turn it. So we're making cubes is what we're doing. Tiny pieces of pork fat that we're going to fry and crisp. So after you reach the center, I just turn it around just so I can keep a good grip on it and cut the other half. So after you've taken your fat back and cut it into little squares, this is probably the toughest part, is to take it and skim off the little cubes, cubes about this size, skim them all off your pork rind. So right now, our fish is pretty much done. I'm going to give it another minute. And when your fish starts to flake apart, it's done. It takes about 20 minutes. And our potatoes, everybody knows how to cook potatoes. Now I'm putting in a new tray to catch the grease, I'm going to use the grease for the dish. And I'd like to mention, if you are familiar with my channel, this is where the homestead house is at right now. So the windows, all the windows have been put in today. And tomorrow, the big eight foot by eight foot patio door 
in the bedroom goes in and the door to the front of the house which i'm so excited to see goes in last one last thing now i need my blackstone tools So I'd like to mention the key to cooking on a griddle is getting it ready. And what that entails is getting the griddle so hot, the first thing that touches the griddle just sizzles. And before we begin, there's three rules. When we cook, we sip. Second rule, your spatula, make sure you leave it on the griddle. If it's hot, nothing's sticking to it. And third, whichever way the wind is going, make sure the wind here is going that way. So your plastics, you don't want to melt them. The wind's going this way. You want to keep your plastics on the opposite end. Because trust me, and from experience, not a total disaster, you'll have a mess. So one thing I'd like to mention Turn on all your burners, make sure they're good and hot, but seeing this side is going to be my warmer where I'm going to put everything once it's cooked. This is shut off, but it'll still stay warm. So first we're going to cook our scrunchions. Now let that oil get hot. I need to keep reminding myself. I put my glass of wine right here, guys, and it's already got warm. The glass is all already very hot. Still learning. Oh, it's browning beautifully already. First of all, Folks, don't mind the fly trap behind me here. It looks awful, but it works. It's a little thing that was purchased for the horse flies and it's doing pretty good. I have to mention one of my subscribers. She had wondered since my short for the Blackstone when I'm gonna do a video on the Blackstone. So Rosie, this one's for you. But Rosie, I've got a great one you're really going to enjoy coming next. You can see all of this grease right here. That is flavor. I am saving every drop of that. Look how much is coming out of the fat back. I am saving every bit of that and I will use every bit of that. And the reason that I save all that is because I just drizzle it over the top of everything. And another thing I'd like to mention when it comes to your scrunchions here, if I was doing this inside the house, I would totally drain all of the fat that's coming out of this right now and continue to cook. That way your scrunchions will get very crispy. And another great thing about doing this outside, did I say I love this Blackstone griddle yet today? I think I say it every day, because this gets used every day. And another thing, as I was about to say, a good reason doing this outside is the smoke. You can't really tell here, but when you do this in your house, it gets a little smoky. All right, so these are definitely crispy enough. Have to get this hair in a ponytail, the wind's picking up a little. I'm gonna scoot these over on my warmer side right here, and that's just perfect. And I know some of you might be looking at it and thinking that's not that much. Realistically, when you're making a plate for anyone, you only put about seven pieces of this on her. They're super salty, and all the flavor from that is in your grease. Time to get this hair up. Now it's time for our onions. Leave a little bit of grease on your griddle so that you can cook your onions in it. A little bit extra grease for 
from your scrunchions for your onions. A little bit of water just to get these cooking quicker. And as I'd like to mention as well, well, these are both the Blackstone tools. Love these. I gotta say the smell from the scrunchions and now the onions, wow, delicious. This summer, there's been quite a few visitors that's come by. Everybody loves the Blackstone griddle, wanted to flip the food on it and all that stuff, and decided they're gonna get one. It's that great. Now I'm sure there's new philanders that do it a different way, do things a little differently, but I'm showing you how I do mine. So what I'm going to do now is add the fish. Now I just put the fish and the onion in my warming spot over here, still heating up. And I'm going to put my bruise, keep the spatula on the griddle, keep it nice and hot. And my bruise, it's gonna go right there. And coming from Newfoundland, I have to say, this is absolutely one of my favorite dishes to eat and cook. And especially outside with the Blackstone griddle. So this cover you see right here is just a tin foil cover. Have a Blackstone cover in the next video with the Blackstone griddle, you'll see that cover. So the next step I'm going to do, I'm going to add the fish and bruise to the onion and the salt fish. And the bonus thing about doing this outside on the homestead here, on the Blackstone griddle, is I have so many dishes cooking and heating everything up. But with this griddle, it's one griddle and it's super easy to clean. And every bit of the oil, the bruise, onion and fish. So this meal, I'm gonna do a taste test, but this meal is actually for the contractors tomorrow for lunch. I'm gonna give them some fish and brews to try. Let's do the taste test. Potatoes, then we put on the fish and brews, and like I'd mentioned earlier, just a few scrunchions, because the fish is already very salty. I've got to say, the, the mosquitoes are getting a little brutal, but I'm going to do the taste test for you guys. I'll be finishing in this inside. Got to get some bruise in there. I love the bruise. Oh. It truly is amazing, and I gotta say, I could literally eat this every single day. It is absolutely delicious. You guys gotta try it. In the comment section down below, let me know if you've tried it, if you've changed it up any kind of way. Let me know, I'd love to hear about it. Bye for now.